Hello, everybody, and welcome to SN 2017. I'm here with Friedman Fries, and we're going to talk about all of his stuff. You have a lot coming out this year. Yeah. <laughs> As it's a lot, it's just a lot of titles. It's just, uh, they're small games, so yeah. Yeah, well, I know the one that I'm most excited about is the Fast Forward series. Yeah, yeah the Fast Forward series is uh, three games. Uh, different um, difficulty level. We have a game uh, 8 plus, a game 10 plus, and a game 12 plus. The easiest way is uh, Fear, and there's the Fortress and the Flea. Uh, the fast forward concept itself is just a box with 90 cards and nothing more. No rules, no, no other material, just 90 cards. And you just open the box, put the deck of cards, unshuffle on the table and start playing immediately. Fast forward. Yeah, I know. I mean, I, I, I played this a few months ago with you and I was astonished that you can start, you could have a game with no rule book. I mean, this is opposite of what Tom likes. Tom loves to read the rules to see how a game is. And, and now you get a game where you literally have a card that gives you the start and then you get more rules as you go. Yeah, yeah of course there, is, there are rules. This is not without rules. You have rules on cards, but in fear it's just, you just start, you turn over a card and says, the card says, okay, on your turn draw a card or play a card. You, it's not allowed to pass. So what do you do? Okay, no cards, I, I draw a card. Next player, oh, I draw a card. So, if it comes up to me, oh, I can play a card, but what does it mean? Yeah? I can do it or draw another card. So, and a few seconds later, there's a new rule, and it says, okay, there's a card limit, there's something, what happens with the cards that you played, and something like that. So then you know specifically more what you're doing, but you still don't know, really know when the game really ends and what happens when the game ends. So you still play and now you know what happens when you play a card, now you know what, what to do with, you know what to, what to try to avoid because there's a, a loser who ends the game in that case and then there's a card who said, oh, don't, don't turn it over now, turn it over when the game ends. So then you look at it and you found out, okay, yeah, this is a winner, this is a loser and we, we are in the middle of the game. So we played one game 15 minutes, yeah, and then some cards uh, are back to the box, the rest is shuffled on the deck again and you play the next game. The next game, so you know some cards already seen they come, but because there's some cards out of the game, you, yeah, there will come new cards and new rules and new things. And, you play 15 times um, until you are through the complete deck of cards. So you are at card 90, and card 90 tells you what to do uh, when you are there, how to play the game. Uh, yeah, more and more and more off. Uh, with fortress, it's the same. You just turn it over, it draw a card. It happens. Well, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a fortress. Oh, yeah. Whoever has a fortress wins the game. Yeah. But how? How does this happen? Then there are some rule cards uh, in Fortress because it's 10 plus, a bit longer, a bit more text on it to read. And Flea is uh, different because it's cooperative and you have to solve it. So you have 90 cards and you really try to get to the bottom of the deck. But you will fail in the first time. Maybe you fail in the first chapter, maybe you reach the second chapter and fail there. But then there are rules how to start it over and you get more and more in the game but in flea it is like you play whatever four or five hours in some to, to solve it yeah in games and games and games uh, but then it's solved so flea is then over it's more escape room style yeah you, you're done with it but the other games you can still play on and on and on yeah it's, it's interesting because you came up with this fast forward concept and you kind of took concepts of escape rooms or concepts of legacy, but turned them on their head where you're not really destroying things as you go. Yeah, it's this fable system uh, included. Uh, started with fable food and uh, with that is, yeah, okay. You can stop where you like and say, okay, with this deck of cards, we play next time, we put it from the shelf, we play it again. Maybe different players, different number of players, doesn't matter. I can still start over where I stopped last with new rules, with new situations, different cards. Somebody asked me, some players asked me when, when playing Fortress, yeah, what's the card distribution? How, how often are these cards, these cards? I don't know, you have to find out, yeah? So this is not about people reading the rule book and looking, oh, this is number, so it's 20 times in the deck, this is 15 times in the deck. No, you don't know it, so you have to guess. 
Uh, it's more, uh, yeah, it's a lot of things to, to explore in that. And that's what I like. Yeah, and you also have a solo game yeah. that's coming out, finished. Yeah, yeah finished is a solo game where you're just sorting a deck of cards. It's a deck sorter. And uh, it's like, a bit like Klondike Solitaire. So you have you have 48, 48 cards, you have card, one card with a one on it, and if you go, if you see the one, you put it on a, a scoring deck. If the two shows up, you put it on, and if you get rid of all the cards and have all cards on that deck, you have one. But the problem is when uh, you, 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 you put the cards on the table and sort them and put them back, on, and then you put them back under your deck. Yeah? So it is a sh cycling deck, and the 48 is a um, bottommost card, and whenever it shows up, you have to drink a coffee. And you only have seven coffees. And when you run out of coffee, you fell asleep and you cannot work anymore. So you, then you failed. But if you still have, uh, if you're still on, the, on your last coffee, yeah, and you got to the 48, you won. So it is about to get, yeah, and there's some candies. You can activate cards with candies to, to do, do better sorting, draw more cards, or whatever. So sorting actions. Yeah, you, you've been doing a lot of these little box games lately. That seems to be your your new thing. I know you you did heavy games. Well, you did Power Grid and some yeah. stuff. And this now you're on to these, like, I guess, more thinky little box games. It was just like the idea of the fast forward. And it was uh, for me, it was crystal clear to say, okay, I want to have not want to show one fast forward. I want to show that this concept works for different types of games. So I, I, I said, okay, I want to have a very easy, a middle a difficult game and a very high complex game, all with a fast forward concept to show it is possible to make this deck of cards and make different types of games. So I worked on this fast forwards, which is one big game for me working wise, because I make one big game a year and now I have three boxes, but still the work for one big game. And then every year I had a small one, so finished is the other small one. It's just like, maybe I'm making a big one again. I don't know. It's just like, whatever happens, uh, it just depends on the reactions on the fair, depends on what games are coming up. Uh, I always wanted to want to look what's, what, what the people are looking for and yeah, I want to try to, to, to yeah. To be uh, there. <laughs> do, do you have more ideas for the fast forward series to continue it? Uh, not, not now. <laughs> I still think of it, and I really want to have a fourth one. But uh, yeah, it is just like you sit there and have an idea. And I say, oh no, it's um, it's it's too too near to fear. Ah, oh, this is ah oh, more like Fortress. No, ah, oh, this would lead in a different direction. So I already made made three, and a fourth one must be different and I, I have no ideas for different fast forwards I have to have ideas for similar fast forwards I don't want to make them it's just yeah. and um, speaking of fabled fruit which was kind of the predecessor to fast yeah. forward you have an expansion for that as well now yeah there's the lime expansion for fabled fruit fabled fruit is a big success and sales are doing well so uh, yeah it's just like I want to make an expansion for that because people ask for that and a friend of mine said oh yeah I played with my daughter and she's asking for more cards I said okay let's do more cards and make an expansion of it so this is just in Fable Fruit you have 59 uh, location cards and now we have 20 more so there are 20 more cards for yeah I don't know at least eight nine games to see new cards, to see new combinations. There's the lime uh, fruit now in, it is not shuffled. You get the limes on the on the location cards and you have to, you use the limes for paying for the for the favorite fruits. So uh, it's a bit different and there are new, yeah, new cards, new special options, yeah. And I know you have something else for Power Grid as well. Yeah, I'm working on Fable stuff now. So I make a Fable expansion for Power Grid, which means there is a, uh, when you play the fabled expansion for Power Grid, you, you are in a campaign. You start with one game of Power Grid and there are cards. Turn it over when the first player um, reaches his third city or if the uh, resource of one sort is depleted or something like that. So events or triggers yeah, to turn over the card. And the, on the other side, there are new rules. There are new tweaks for the game. And after you played the first game with the Fabled expansion, then you have turned over whatever, five, six, seven of the 15 cards. But when you play the next game of Power Grid, you still use the cards you already turned over, 
and you try to uh, and then there will be new cards showing up in the second game of this campaign and even in the third campaign there will be new rules out there and so you can just take your power grid open it take the us side play it three times with the stack but you can turn it over and play it three times with the german set because there are another 15 cards in there especially for the german side or you own the power grid deluxe so you take it there and use it on the north american side with the cards or on the europe side so it's optimized for both games so and you can even sw you can switch numbers of players you can play whatever start with three players next time you play five players it's okay yeah, it kind of adds like a little twist into your classic game there. Yeah, it's in campaign. It's just, okay, of course you have to know they have to play a power grid three times, which is at least two hours a game, I guess, because of the new rules, the players are getting uh, even very, uh, yeah, what to say. If you're a really experienced power grid player, you really have to rethink what the new rule is doing to you. And if you're new to Power Grid, <laughs> you have to, yeah, you even have to. So it is just, it makes it a bit longer just because you get new rules and you have to think of, ah, oh, what happens if I, ah, oh, it's interesting. I have to, oh no, I don't want to buy this power plan. No, I have not to buy this power plan. Normally I would have bought this, but with the new rule, uh, this one is better. So yeah. No, it sounds great. It sounds like you have a lot of good stuff coming out this year, which I've seen a few already and looking forward to seeing the rest. And uh, I assume you have some things in the works for the future as well. Yeah, I, I'll bring it to you in April. <laughs> we'll see you and I will uh, force you to play it. <laughs> so for those of you who might be at the gathering, which is probably not all the fans out here, but um, uh, we'll hopefully have some new scoops and some new games for Friedman. Okay. Well, it's a pleasure having you. Thank you. And um, hope you enjoyed this interview with Friedman Fries. Okay. We'll bring you more from Essen 2017 here at the Dice Tower.